Hey guys! Today's video is going to be another disability discourse and as you can probably tell by the title, today I'm going to be addressing newly disabled or newly diagnosed people. Now, I don't know about you guys, but for me, the initial diagnosis and becoming disabled was the most difficult part of my journey as a disabled person. I think when you become disabled later in life, uh, it's pretty overwhelming. It kind of feels like the end of your world in a lot of ways. It feels like your life, as you know, is just over. Um, and so I really wanted to make this video just saying some things that I would really <laughs> have liked to have heard from an older disabled person or like someone who'd been further down like their journey than I had. Um, just things that I wish that I had been told when I was newly diagnosed. Now, I do realize that disability is a super broad spectrum and obviously advice won't work for everyone, so I have tried really hard to pick out things that are quite broad and will hopefully apply to a lot of people. Um, so I have five things that are like practical things uh, that I think would be really useful to know and that again, I wish that I'd known when I was initially diagnosed. And then I have five things that are more like um, attitude, spiritual, kind of like inside things. So practical things and like not practical things. So let's jump right into it. So I'm going to start out with the non-practicals as I called them. And number one is it does get better. Now, I know you've probably heard this a lot of times and you've probably heard it from a whole lot of people who can't possibly know that. Like, I remember when I was first diagnosed, people would just tell me, oh, it'll get better, it'll get better, it'll be okay. I know how empty that sounds. However, <laughs> this is coming from someone who went through something pretty similar and I remember what it's like to feel like it can't possibly get better, it can only get worse. I have a degenerative disability, like it degenerates, it gets worse, it literally gets worse, right? Um, but the thing is, it gets worse like physically for me, my, my disability will only get worse physically, but mentally and emotionally it only gets easier from here. I can't stress enough that the most difficult time for me of being disabled was becoming disabled because you have to learn a new way of existing. It's really hard right now because you're basically a baby again trying to learn how to, like I said before, navigate this world in a new way that you've never had to do before. So of course right now it's really really tough and it feels like everything's out of reach and everything's too difficult, but it won't always feel like that. You'll find new ways of doing things, you'll find new ways of doing the things that you loved, you'll pick up new hobbies, you'll eventually it will become so second nature to you to do things your way that you won't even notice anymore. Like I open things in a weird, like, like jars and things, I open in a really strange way and I don't even notice that anymore and it, it always surprises me when someone points it out. Like, just these little things that at the moment seem so, seem to set you apart so much from other people, from normal people. Those things won't always feel that weird or that different and soon enough, like, humans are amazing. <laughs> humans are incredible. We are so adaptable and soon enough this will just be normal for you and you'll feel okay about it. And I know, I know how empty it sounds. I know that it just sounds like I'm trying to make you feel better. I promise you, I'm not. Like, this is... <sighs> This is the hardest part that you're going through right now and it's okay to feel overwhelmed. It's okay to feel like it's a struggle because it is, but it won't always be that way. Think about like think about it like learning a new language, for example. Like at first you just feel so annoyed that you can't express your thoughts as well as you want to or as well as you can in your native language. And then one day <laughs> you realize that you're having a conversation with someone in a new language and you can just do that now. You don't necessarily see each tiny step of progress, but one day you'll look back and think, wow, that used to be really difficult and now it's okay. So <laughs> trust me when I say, get through this part. If you can get through this part, you can get through the whole thing. You, <laughs> right now, you should be patient with yourself and just give yourself some time to come to terms with this giant change in your life and know that you will come to terms with it and it will become normal and you will be okay. Number two, start advocating for yourself early. This is so important, I can't stress this enough. I feel like I really didn't start advocating for myself soon enough and there are a lot of um, opportunities where I feel that if I had been uh, more strong in my advocacy that I could have got things done a lot faster or in a better way. So 
try and start as early as possible. I know like right now everything's really overwhelming and it's hard to think of doing another thing, but when you can, look into things, get information of your own and don't be afraid to advocate for, your, for yourself. Like you're the you're the person who knows your your condition, your disability the best. You're the only person who knows it. So remember that when you're talking to specialists, when you're talking to doctors, they know the science and they know the medical stuff. They don't know how you feel, they don't know your specific case, and your specific case can be really individual, and most of the time is <laughs> really individual. So don't be afraid to speak up for yourself and advocate for yourself. It's really good to start this as early as possible because, like I said, I feel like I could have got things done quite a bit faster <laughs> for myself if I had been able to speak up for myself and felt confident enough in my own knowledge of my body and myself <laughs> to advocate for myself. So yeah, start that as soon as you can. Number three, people will leave and that's okay. It won't feel like it right now and every time you lose a friend who just can't deal with you being disabled, every time someone slowly stops talking to you because it's too much of a hassle to come to hospital or it's too depressing to be around you, it feels like <laughs> it's it feels bad. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It, it does hurt and of course you know that. Like, It hurts when people leave. But think of it this way. It's the same as any other big change in your life, right? Like if you move away a long distance, a lot of your friends will just kind of drop off and that's because they just weren't meant to be in your life. Like you will keep, there are friends that you'll keep forever. There are friends who will be around no matter what, whether you move like a billion miles away, whether you have a child, whether you get married, whether you end up with just completely different lives, these friends will be around forever. And those are the people who you need to be thinking about right now, like those are the people who are important. The people who leave, the people who leave, that's okay. That's... I can say this now looking back like in a very peaceful way and I feel fine about it now because I know we just weren't right for each other. Obviously, like, we weren't right to be friends with each other. Um, but like I said, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that it doesn't hurt when it happens, but try to remember that it just wasn't meant to be. You will both be happier without each other in the long run. Like, if these people feel bad being around you or um, aren't interested in being around you because of your, your like, new disability, then that's okay, That that's better for both of you because they would feel bad being around you and then they would make you feel guilty and it's just like this terrible cycle of unhealthiness. It's better that they leave, honestly, <laughs> and leave you with the friends that you do want. So <laughs> I guess like my advice for this is know that it will happen. It's uh, unfortunate but it's just the case. People will leave and know that eventually you'll be able to look back on that and see that it was just the best thing that could have happened to you, they did leave peacefully. So yeah, that's a slightly depressing one, I'm sorry, but I wanted to be real here. <laughs> number four ties into number one, and that is be gentle with yourself. Like I said in number one, you're basically learning how to be a person again. Be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself, give yourself time and allow yourself to feel negative feelings. You're allowed to be sad, you're allowed to mourn the loss of a life that you thought you were going to have and that maybe now you won't have. You're allowed to feel those things. Try not to get bogged down with them, try not to let them overwhelm you, but feel them. They're your feelings, you're allowed to have them. Anyone would feel the same way, we all have periods like that. So feel your feelings and try to remember that you're going through a lot and it's okay to be sad and it's okay to it's okay to not always be okay <laughs> like things will get better and you'll still probably have times where you're sad and you think oh this isn't fair like why is it like this but those times will get less and less like as time goes on those times will get less and they'll also get less intense until so like now for me it's been like how many years nearly 15 years <laughs> and um now it's just the odd niggle where i'm like wish i could do that thing that i can't do anymore but oh, oh well i have a lot of other things that i can do that i enjoy um so at the start recognize that you're going through a lot and you're allowed to feel whatever ways you need to feel um try to 
just get through it. Just get through it in whatever way you need to do. Just feel your feelings, um, write them down if you need to, like find ways to, <laughs> to take out your frustrations that are hopefully productive or at least not destructive, and give yourself some time to get used to this new way of life that you've just found out about. It's okay to not be okay. Fifth and finally for the non-practical section of this video, know that you can do this. I have so many people, able people, tell me that they couldn't live life the way that I live life or, oh wow, I don't know how you do it, I would just kill myself, like all these things that are just really inappropriate to say. The thing is, no one ever thinks that they could get through something until they get through it. Like, if I think about, for example, my dog dying. Like, I thought that I would be an absolute wreck, I thought that I would never get over that, I thought that it would, like, just destroy me. And he died a few months ago and it's okay, like, it's sad but it's okay, like, no one ever thinks about something difficult and thinks, oh, I'd, I'd be fine. Like, that's just not how it is, but we are fine. We get through things. I mentioned before that humans are amazingly adaptable and that's completely true, like, People get through so, so many things, and you can get through this. People adapt to so many things, and you will adapt to this. Like, it doesn't feel like it right now, because you haven't had a chance to start your adaption process, start your uh, mutation, <laughs> shall we say, into this superior being who can deal with this disability. But you will. You will. Like, <laughs> I know, again, all these things sound so empty and so false, because I remember at the start how it felt and how helpless I felt and how I felt like I, I just couldn't be happy. Like, how could I ever be happy again with this thing? Like, I'm going to be in pain for the rest of my life. How can I ever be happy? But you will be. It's, <laughs> I, like, it's almost magical, the, the human brain's ability to adapt to a new normal. Like, like I said, it will become normal. It will become just your everyday life. And there are plenty of studies that show that people with disabilities are on average happier than able people. Um, look into it, it's super, super fascinating. I won't go into it here because I'll ramble for like 10 hours, but like definitely if you want to know more about the psychology of happiness and disabilities, look into that, it's fascinating. And know that that can be you. It just takes some time and a little bit of mutation. <laughs> Onto the practical section of this video, number one is going to be if you are invisibly disabled or you have a disability that's difficult for um, able-bodied people or strangers to see, consider carrying some sort of signifier. So it's ridiculous that we have to do this because like invisible disabilities make up a pretty big like portion of disabled people in general, um, but consider carrying something like a cane or wearing, for example, like a soft wrist splint. Uh, just so that people will know that you're disabled, even if it's not really very useful for you. Um, for example, sometimes I take a cane around with me if I'm having a bad day, or I wear a wrist splint if I'm having a bad day. Like, I have <laughs> polyarticular arthritis, which means it's in all my joints, so a cane does nothing for me, <laughs> and a wrist splint doesn't really do terribly much either. But the point is, like, that people will be a little more careful not to bump into you, which can really hurt. And um, the biggest one for me is <laughs> if you're wearing a wrist splint and you go to shake someone's hand, especially a man's hand, they are less likely to try and crush your fingers. And that, as any other disabled person with sore hands will know, is a nightmare. <laughs> so yeah, um, even if the signifier isn't something that necessarily helps you, like me and my cane, consider taking one anyway if you have um, problems in public when people don't recognize you as disabled. Number two, look into assistive technology and products. Things existed for arthritis that I had no idea even existed at all. Like there are, there's like grippy material that you can get to put on jar lids, there's jar keys that can open jars for you if they're really difficult, um, you can get tap turners, there's all sorts of things that before I had arthritis I just had no idea that this world existed of assistive products. So definitely look into assistive tech and products. You can ask your specialist or doctor about this and I really highly recommend getting a, an appointment with an occupational therapist. Uh, these are people whose job it is to find all the assistive tech that might be good for you and so they can really help you. Also Google is your best friend just for looking up things that you're like, does something like that exist? It probably does. <laughs> Number three, get into a routine with your medication. 
this will become super easy over time and you'll just start to have it as part of your weekly or like monthly or daily routine. Um, but at the start, it is kind of difficult to remember and it is so important to be taking medications like evenly spaced. So for this, those pill boxes are great. The ones that um, have like the weekly thing and then you put all the pills in them. I don't like them because they're really hard to open when my hands are sore. Um, and also they didn't fit all of my pills in them when I first got diagnosed either. So if you're like that and you have um, difficulty with those, the other thing that that I recommend is phone alarms like I just set a monthly alarm for my um, folic acid and I have a weekly alarm for methotrexate and Embrel and I really recommend this it like I still have it going now even though mostly I remember it's just nice to have that like little thing pop up pop up on my phone and then I'm like oh right gotta do my injection tonight it's just super like super handy. So that's good. Um, another thing I've seen some people do is um, if you have difficulty remembering if you've taken your meds or not, um, you can leave the bottle or the blister pack face up if you haven't taken them and then flip it over when you do take them. So that way you can just like double check so that you're not double dosing because not a great idea. <laughs> Number four, don't be afraid to ask about services that might be available to you through your specialist or your doctor. For example, a disability card for your car or like taxi chits so that you can get taxis um, for free like to a certain amount. There are a whole ton of funding options for people with disabilities and a lot of them don't get used because people just feel too bad to ask for them. I think there's a really big stigma around like asking for help and especially asking for governmental aid as a person with a disability and that is ridiculous because if it will help you and if you're struggling you absolutely need that assistance and you're entitled to that assistance you <laughs> like it's it's okay to need help it's okay to need financial help it's okay to need help from the government it's okay like that's what it's there for. It's there for that and often, so often these funds go underused or unused. So don't be afraid to just check in and say, hey, is there like anything available for X thing that I am having trouble with? And the final thing is find your community. I cannot stress enough how helpful it is to find a community of like-minded disabled people, whether that's people with your exact type of disability or people with all sorts of disabilities who you just like that community. Like, it doesn't matter where you find this group, whether it's a support group in real life that you find through your hospital, whether it's online on Facebook, whether it's like a blog that you follow on Tumblr, whatever it is, it helps so much to know that you're not going through all of this alone and just to have a community there to ask things of or to get support from if you need it. Knowing that there are people out there who understand exactly what you're going through, like it, it changes, it's it changes the game like it's just a huge game changer and I didn't find the right disabled community for me until pretty recently like three or four years ago um, and it just makes me feel like so much better it makes me also feel really great when I can help other people with advice like if they ask like for support or ask about something that I happen to know about it feels great to be able to give back in that way and it's just like yeah it it really really helps and I can't recommend highly enough looking for the right community for you from the start just so that you have that support there. So that's it for the 10 things that I wish that I'd known when I first got diagnosed with a disability. I really hope that it's been helpful to you and that you've enjoyed watching this and you feel a little bit better now. <laughs> Getting diagnosed and being disabled suddenly is really tough and it's super overwhelming and you're gonna feel not great for a little while. But like I said, it does really get better. You can feel happy, you can have friends, you can do all of the things that you love and you'll find new things that you love. And it does get easier, even though, again, I know that sounds really cliche and very empty, <laughs> but I promise you, it really does. So anyway, if you have any further questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will do my best to get back to you. And apart from that, I will see you in the next one. Peace.